Hi, it's Dan here from Flexible, and today I'm gonna to show you how to distribute leads using High Level and Zapier. Let's dive in. Okay, so here's the thing. If you are generating a lot of leads and you're looking to distribute them to multiple clients, then you wanna get like a custom solution for that, which is we always recommend Leadbyte as our go-to. But if you are one of these people that's maybe started your own lead generation brand and you have a website in home services or whatever it is, and you're generating traffic via Facebook ads or Google ads or whatever it is, and then they're being sent to different clients off the back of that, then today's video is, is gonna show you how you can do that inside the high level platform because it's gonna be cheaper um, while you're doing lower volumes than buying a bespoke solution, which is like Leadbyte, which we always recommend. So it is you know, quite a powerful solution for you. It does work, we've used it before. There's other people in my community that have been using it. We got a lot, a lot of questions about how to do this actually, which prompted me to speak to my um, tech guy, Graham, and say, listen, can you help me put this together and do a little screencast where we, we can teach people how to do it in a YouTube tutorial. So without further ado, I'll pass you over to Graham. Um, enjoy and be kind to him, thank you. Hey guys, uh, welcome to the video on how to distribute leads using High Level and Zapier. Uh, now before we get going, we recommend you using a lead distribution software for this, that's built for this, which is like lead by it, so something like that. Uh, but we understand there's a lot of people in our community who are probably just starting out or don't want to invest in a lead distribution software just yet and they want to try and distribute it using high level. Uh, this is a way that basically allows you to do this. The more clients you get on, the more messy it could be but it will be pretty good if you've got a few clients or, yeah, okay. I'm gonna show you a couple of ways in which you can do this. Uh, the first way is in Zapier and it's using a Facebook lead form trigger. Now you can substitute this out for a type form trigger, a lead set quiz trigger, or any other quiz software that, that you're using that's in Zapier, you can use that as a trigger. So I'll just show you how this works. Uh, so obviously you wanna select Facebook lead ads and then new lead whatever, if you've got another quiz, you can pick that one. Uh, you wanna connect it up, which is uh, on the Facebook leads ads, you can just uh, press connect and just sign into Facebook using Zapier and that will connect to your Facebook account. Uh, and then you want to go and select the page and the form that you want it to trigger off of. Um, if you've got no data on this form yet, you wanna to go to this URL, which basically allows you to test your lead form and bring through some test data. You just select your page, form, press preview form, fill out the answers, and then submit it, and you'll have test data in the next bit here. Press continue, test your trigger, and it should pull through that data, which I've already done here, as you can see. Uh, and this will help populate all the fields coming up. So this next bit, this is what basically makes this work, uh, and I'll show you how it works. So you wanna find code by Zapier, and you wanna select run Python, okay? and you wanna leave this top bit empty, uh, and then you wanna enter this code, basically. Uh, if you wanna comment below, um, I will send you over a notepad with this code in it, because you may not wanna type it out, and you could easily make some mistakes if you just type it out from the video. Um, but no worries, I'm happy to share this code with you. Just comment below and I'll send you over a notepad. Now the way this works is basically it, random, it randomly attributes an outcome every time uh, the Python is run, okay? Now I'm gonna tell you which bit does what. So up here, the only bit that you'll need to change when you copy and paste this in is this area here. So I've set it up for four clients basically. So it's gonna distribute, distribute between four clients and I've called them client one, client two, client three, client four. Now you can uh, change the name of each client just as long as you make sure it's in between these two quotation marks. You can call each client whatever you want. So you can call them by their name, uh, whatever really and then so on and so forth. If you just want two clients, you would delete out these two, making sure to delete this comma next to client two as well. If you wanted three, you would just delete this out. Uh, and if you wanted more, you would just add, add, add a comma, space, quotation mark, client five, end quotation, uh, and so on if you've got more clients than that, okay? Uh, we're gonna go with four though, just to show you how this works. Now what this bit of code does down here is it basically, it attributes a count for each outcome. So the code should remember how many times each outcome has been selected, 
which hopefully will make it a bit more evenly distributed. Because before, if it's just random, it could select client one three times in a row um, and it won't be as even when it's just random, randomly done, especially between four clients. Uh, it's a bit easier to do it between two uh, randomly, but with four, you want, to, you want to try and get it as even as possible. Uh, so this is what this code does. Um, so you want to press continue. And then you want to test the action just to see how even it is, just to make sure it's, you know, doing what you want it to do, basically. Um, so we'll retest the action. And we'll kind of like count up how many times it does each outcome. So logs one, so this is pick client one. Let's see what it does now. Client two. Client four. Client one. Client one, client two, client three, client three, client one, client one, client four, client three, Client two. So you can see it's, it's running through. Um, it's not like, you know, as simple as just doing client one, client two, client three, client four. Um, but it's going through and setting them quite e evenly, I would say. One thing you want to watch out for with this is quotas. So say you've got quotas for each client per day, you'll want to amend the zap. So say you've hit 10 leads for a client two in a day, you want to come to your zap and amend this code and you'll want to delete out client two. So it will stop selecting client two. Um, and then you can go and retest your actions. So client two will get no more leads for that day. Much like in a lead distribution software, you can just turn off the contract kind of thing for client two. You have to come into run Python code and take out client two so it stops getting any, any more leads. And then you just run it for client one, client three, client four. Like so, okay? And then the next day when you start to run it again, uh, you wanna go in and turn on client two again, which is basically putting quotation marks like so and or, or making sure you put a comma after it. Every, every outcome should have a comma after it apart from the last outcome, okay? If you don't do that, it will affect the Python code. Okay, so if you're gonna constantly um, go in and do that, make sure you save this video somewhere you can just constantly refer back to it so you do it correctly. Okay, so now you've seen how the code works. Um, you'll wanna go next and you wanna create a path, okay? Um, so you'll just want to search paths and you better select paths here. Click on path rules, okay, cool. And then it will, it will give you two paths uh, originally, but you can create as many paths as you want. So this will be named uh, whatever you name your client. So for example, I've known client one, client two, client three, client four. So the paths are called client one, client two, client three, uh, and client four. If you're calling the clients by name, you want to call it the same name that you've done in the Python code, so you know which one's coming down. And then under client one, or whatever you've called it, uh, you want to go in and you want to select run Python code and you want to select the runtime logs. And then you want to go contains and whatever you've called your client one, you want to put it exactly as it shows there, okay? So for example, you can see in the runtime logs, the last test we did was client three. So this won't go through this will be blocked going through to client one, so that's that, that's fine, that's what you want. And you want to just go and press continue. You should make sure it says text contains as well. Um, you want to press continue, and it should say your path would not have continued. So that's cool, that's perfect. Okay, so then you want to go and add on a uh, add update contact in lead connector, which is high level. You want to select client ones, so you want to up, add update contact. You want to select client one's uh, lead connector account. Um, and if you're not sure how to connect it, basically what it means is it will be, each client will have their own individual sub account. So you should have, if you've got four clients, you should have four sub accounts. 
Uh, and for client one, so this is client three, you go to settings, business profile, API key. You copy that. And so say for client three, we'll go, we'll go into client three's um, thing. You go to lead connector. You would go to change or add connection. Um, and basically you can connect to a new account. It will come up like this, uh, a new screen. I paste our code in there and press yes, continue to lead connector. And that will uh, go back and it will create your lead connector account uh, for client three. And you want to do this each time for client one, two, three, and four. Uh, they will all have different API keys. So you just want to go into each go level sub account uh, and link them up. And then what you want to do uh, is then go to action uh, and you want to add a uh, full name, phone number, email, or whatever's in your quiz, you want to you want to link up to your custom fields. You want to put a, like a tag that you're using. You want to mark leaders as, as true. Uh, put in the country if if you know it, and then map all your um, fields basically to your high level fields. And you want to basically do the exact same thing across every single client. So you want to connect the client's lead connector. So these should all have different sub accounts. All have different lead connector accounts in Zapier. I'd always name your lead connector accounts as well so you know who's is whose. And it should have the exact same fields uh, done. So new lead, true, United Kingdom. And map all your fields across, like so, like so. And as you can see, because this test has got client three, you'll be able to see in this one, runtime log. So make sure that's selected as client three. Text contains client three or whatever you're calling each client. Press continue, uh, sorry, I meant retest filter and this should say it would have continued. Yeah, your path would have continued. So that's basically how you would distribute leads from, a, from one lead form. So say you're running one lead form to one campaign, but you're supplying four different clients. This is how you can evenly-ish distribute your leads to each, each of your clients um, into high level. Now, the second way uh, I wanted to show you guys uh, is via Catchhook. So it's exactly the same, except instead of a Facebook lead form that triggers it, it is a Catchhook. And I know a lot of people in our community uh, run ads like this. So this one, what this one will do is your Facebook lead ad will be sending all leads into one a high level account. So this is the master high, high level account, let's say. All the leads will be coming into this um, something like this, like an automation that qualifies them out. You could have multiple different SMSs going out, ask them different qualifying questions, much like our sales Android. And you could have this on the back of a sales Android. Uh, if you're not sure what that is, um, I'm putting something in the top left-hand corner, um, which basically you can demo our sales Android, um, which is basically all AI based. Uh, or you could just have one simple... Um, SMS, which is basically like just to confirm the phone number. So it could be something like, hey, uh, I see you've, um, you're have you interested in XYZ product. Uh, you know, can I just confirm this is your correct phone number? And if they reply back, it means one, the phone number is valid. Um, and two, uh, they're a bit more keen, a bit more warm than just, you know, say just filling out a form and waiting for a call. Some people want to put this little bit of um, qualification in there. Uh, and once they reply back, you've got to wait, no, it's just reply back to this confirmed phone number. Then you want to send it to your clients. This is a webhook node, and this is basically the catch hook that catches the data. So you put data through this. This will then trigger this uh, automation, and then it's exactly the same. You run the same bit of Python code um, as we did in this one. The same paths, client one, two, three, four, uh, and then it will be sending them to their individual sub accounts. So with this way, you would have five sub accounts, which is you have your, your master sub account where they come in and you confirm that uh, the phone number is real and they're interested in the product. And then it will get sent off to the four different clients or sub accounts. Um, and that's kind of how you can distribute your leads um, using high level. 
Uh, as I said, it's a lot simpler to do um, and a lot more efficient and accurate inside something like Leadbyte. But this is a good way to kind of um, do it with your leads. If you're noticing that one of your clients is getting way more leads than the other, again, you could just come in here quickly and amend it. Just amend the code. Do it this one. Uh, to just amend the code. You go to action, just take out the client that's getting too many leads and just let these three get some more over the next couple of hours. Um, we we do similar inside our uh, inside our lead um, distribution softwares. We would go in and just, just turn off a client if they're getting too many leads or, you know, something like that. The equivalent is just deleting out the client like this. Make sure you take out that um, comma as well. There should only be a comma after... Um, the first one and the middle ones, no comma after this one. If you see something like this, that's not gonna work uh, and always troubleshoot. So just to show, show you what happens if that's written like this. Client four will never be chosen, I don't believe. There we go, client three, client four. So you don't want that. So you want to make sure that you've got that comma there, okay? Very important. And again, if you want this uh, bit of Python, drop us a comment and I'll send it across. Um, but yeah, guys, that's uh, that's kind of the, the, the video today. Um, hopefully you have can understand it um, and how this kind of logic works. If, if you've got any questions, pop a comment below and I'll be happy to get back to you. Uh, but thanks a lot, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Thank you so much, Graham. I'm sure the people that have watched this video are gonna really enjoy what you've put together. As I said before, it is a really good solution that's cheap, especially if you've already got high level and you wanna sell leads um, to different clients via a round robin system or whatever, then this is gonna be for you. Uh, so thank you again, Graham. I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give us a thumbs up if you have. Comment below if you've got any questions for Graham and I'm sure he'll get back to you in the comments section. And lastly, subscribe to our channel. So you'll be first to know when we're creating new videos. I'll speak to you soon.